Time has passed with the swiftness of light. It is already morning. Impermanence rushes upon us every moment. Mara follows every step. O practitioners of the way, strive diligently. Attain Nirvana. Rare is it to meet with the Dharma, ultimate and profound. Even though one seeks for hundreds and thousands of eons, fortunately we now hear and receive. We pray that we may understand its talent as true meaning. Let the Blessed One teach the Dharma. Let the Sublime One teach the Dharma. There are beings with little dust in their eyes who are wasting and not hearing the Dharma. There will be those who will understand. The Buddha has said, open for them are the doors of the deathless. Let those with ears now show their play. Buddhas throughout space and time reverently do it all. Dharmas to the end of time reverently do it all. Sangha so exemplary reverently do it all. To this holy place, I mean the Buddha, highest one, bring your presence now, we pray. To this holy place, Shakyamuni, enlightened one, bring your presence now. To this holy place, to targeters of all worlds, bring your presence now, we pray.
Wishing to practice a religious life in truly simple way, freeing themselves of sophistication and attachment to all forms of cleverness, the method of opening oneself to Amitabha's grace is the practice of Nyan Fo, with body, speech, and mind, particularly verbal recitation of Nama Amidabhu. This is not something done as a form of meditation nor is it based on study, understanding and wisdom, or the revelation of deep meaning. Deep meaning is indeed there, for the Nambutsu is a window through which the whole universe of Buddhist teaching can be perceived in all its depth. But none of this is either necessary or even helpful to success in the practice. Rather, such study cultivates secondary faculties to be held separate from the mind of practice itself. The primary practice requires only one essential. Realize that you are a totally foolish being who understands nothing, but who can with complete trust recite Namo Amida Buddha. 
Know that, that this will generate rebirth in the pure land, without even knowing what rebirth in the pure land truly is. This, this is the practice of ignorant beings, and ignorance is essential for its accomplishment. This practice automatically encompasses the three minds, and the mind of contrition has a fourth. To pursue something more profound or more sophisticated, or to have a theory, or to think that understanding will yield greater enlightenment than this, is to be misled, and to fall back into self-power, whereby the whole practice is spoiled. However wise, learned, or skilled you may be, set it aside and be the foolish being, completely in the performance of the practice. Nothing else is required, and anything else is too much. Faith and practice cannot be differentiated. The Buddha body is delineated by the precepts. How deficient we are by comparison. By our daily difficulty in the perceptual life, we awaken to the presence of the myriad karmic obstacles, without which we would already perceive the land of love and bliss. We would be as the vow body of Buddha. Thus we know and experience that we are foolish beings of wayward passion. This knowledge of our condition is part of the essential basis when it gives rise to contrition. Thus all obstacles become impediments to faith unless we experience contrition and letting go. Saving grace, as was made clear by Shandar's dream and advice to Taucho, only comes through the Sangha monk. If you can perform the practice in this simple-minded way, Amida will receive you, and you may fear for nothing, since all is completely assured. Dwelling in this settled faith, you may then use your secondary faculties, your knowledge and skills and accumulated experience as tools for helping all sentient beings. But do not then think that anything of relevance to your own salvation is thereby accomplished nor that you are making something of yourself. Whatever merit there may be in your actions of this kind, immediately and totally dedicated to the benefit of others, that they may enter the pure land, and that you yourself may not be encumbered by consciousness of virtue, which will only contaminate the practice. As Herman says, without pedantic errors, fervently recite the name. I am on day seven today of my uh, daily vigil. So I'm spending an hour in the center of Malvern every day with a sign around my neck that says, that has a picture of the planet and says with love and grief for the earth. And um, I'm holding silence and keeping my eyes shut and I noticed yesterday as I was setting out my stall, I put a little notice up next to me so people can read about what I'm doing if they want to. And I have a little notice in front of me that says I'm holding silence so they don't try and talk to me, although that doesn't always work. Um, and I have um, an hourglass with pink sand in it that's half an hour. So at the beginning I turn it over and then half an hour through I have a bell that goes off and I turn it over again. I realized as I was performing these actions to sort of get ready to start and starting um, that I was performing a sacred ritual and that the space that I inhabit at the bottom of the steps in the middle of town opposite the post office where lorries go past and, and, and noise and um, people is that I have made a little tiny pure land around myself by 
treating the objects and the space as sacred. And it was interesting because I didn't know that I was doing that until I'd been doing it for a little while. Uh, I was like, oh, yes. The way that I place that reminds me of how I place things on the shrine. And there's something for me that's really valuable about those actions that we repeat over and over again. As we recited summary and faith and practice together, the three of us, I was thinking, how many times have we done that together <laughs> now? I don't know a lot, uh, sometimes with other people, sometimes without. And that there's something in the repetition that reinforces something about our sacred connection with the Buddha. And then I've also been thinking about how being in the shrine room this morning is strange. The last time me and Casper were in the shrine room at this time was March this year, it's now November. And in March, when the pandemic hit, we um, separated into a separate household. So the people that live in the temple stayed up here with their kitchen and we went down to our flat with our, our separate kitchen and didn't mix and we, um, we uh, offered these services from my little office, kind of crammed into a little corner um, for a while. And then when we realized it was possible, we went into the temple garden and we've been doing the service out there for four months, maybe something like that. And I missed the garden this morning. I'm looking at it as we were walking past and thinking, oh, we'd be walking all around the garden right now with the dogs following us and um, getting cold fingers. And also it feels really special to be back in here. And it means that people like Matt can join us again, which is really wonderful. So there's something about that combination of doing the same things over and over with reverence and also being able to take it all very lightly. Who knows what will happen next week? Maybe the temple will burn down. <laughs> Maybe uh, we'll be back in the garden again before too long. But that whatever happens, we can do whatever we're doing with the reverence that I turn over my hourglass or even um, I take a selfie of myself at the beginning of each session of sitting outside and, and it feels like even that selfie taking <laughs> has become a part of the, the sacred ritual. And we can lean into the repetition and take it lightly because all of this ritual, all of these things that we do in this room are stand-ins for and are um, a kind of different languages for, or different, um, different words for refuge in the Buddha. We, we might have different, a different language than um, Tri Ratna Buddhist has, or a Theravadan Buddhist. We might have different language than a Quaker or a, a Methodist or a Muslim but we're all speaking of something that is at the center of everything. And that is always holding us steady. And that as we speak of this in whatever language we choose, we realize how, we remember how strong the connection is. I don't think that the connection needs to be any stronger because Amida is always there, is always present, but, but the clouds move aside a little bit so we can see, so we can feel that being with the Buddha. So we will now move into some silence and uh, we'll begin with chanting the name of the Buddha. And uh, he doesn't need any encouragement. She doesn't need any encouragement to be with us, but we need encouragement. So 
It's all, it's all for us. Now may we be.
I go to Amida. For a refuge I go to Amida. Namo Amita Baya. Namo Amita Baya. For refuge I go to the Buddha. For refuge I go to the Buddha. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. For refuge I go to the Dharma. For refuge I go to the Dharma. Namo Dharmaya. Namo Dharmaya. For refuge I go to the Sangha. For refuge I go to the Sangha. Namo Sangaya. Namo Sangaya. For refuge I go to the pure land. For refuge I go to the pure land. Namo Buddhaksha Triya. Namo Buddhaksha Triya. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not take life. I pray that I may not take life. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not steal. I pray that I may not steal. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not fall into sexual misconduct. I pray that I may not fall into sexual misconduct. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may not fall into wrong speech. I pray that I may not fall into wrong speech. With faith in the three jewels. With faith in the three jewels. I pray that I may avoid intoxication. I pray that I may avoid intoxication. Namo tassa. such as I, 
Are the unique and essential grace by which to enter the pure land. Therefore, with body, speech, and mind, we are devoted to the teachings that all may attain a state of bliss. Now, ready. 